Can I do that? Okay, so um, we are in Zoom. Welcome to UNCG Zoom. Sorry for the last minute switch, but we uh, had to, uh, uh, we went into WebEx 10 minutes early, which is kind of a best practice of webinars, and um, the audio was not working. And we were getting a lot of error messages. So um, again, also a lesson on being flexible in uh, this new day and age. So here, <laughs> So I guess um, all of that stuff I said were like, man, you and CG shouldn't have rushed into getting Zoom was incorrect. <laughs> we, I guess, should have rushed into it because here we are in Zoom. So um, as you all, most of you know in this room, I think my name is Sam Harlow. I am the online learning librarian for UNCG Libraries. UNCG Libraries came up with the idea to create a series of webinars for the UNCG community on research and applications. Uh, so welcome to this series. Uh, this one, because it is on the census, we did open it up to non-UNCG people. So if anyone is watching this later or comes in, uh, welcome. So in this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG libraries, resources, and research tools. These are 30-minute webinars that are recorded in either WebEx meetings or Zoom and placed on the library webpage through YouTube where they are eventually closed captioning uh, have participant data available for the public. So all of the webinars live on this page that I'm about to drop into chat. Um, so um, let me know if you all have any questions uh, as we go, but I'm going to cover just a couple of logistical things before um, Melody and uh, Rachel present. Uh, so um, please mute your audio during the presentation. Um, I did set this up to be, I think, mute on entry, uh, but you are welcome to unmute yourself and talk at the end. But while Melody and Rachel are presenting, uh, please keep yourself muted and use the chat for questions. So at the end, we will have time for questions where you could turn your mic on and ask questions, or you could always drop them in the chat if you don't have a mic. Um, a mic is not required to hear this webinar. So if there are any technical issues, uh, you can email me at slharlow at uncg.edu and I'm gonna put that in the chat and I'll guide you through some solutions on the back end. Uh, but don't try, you know, it's nice to not take over chat with these kind of issues. Um, worst case scenario, please remember that this is being recorded. So um, as I present, uh, sorry, as I uh, introduce uh, Rachel and Melody, are there any questions in the chat? Okay, so. Uh, today's uh, session is on uh, Census 101 by Rachel Olson and Melody Rood. Uh, Rachel, uh, you can say your title because I don't yeah. uh, have the full one right, but um, Melody Rood is the Student Success Librarian of UNCG. So I'm going to mute myself, Rachel. And cool. Okay. Well, thanks, Sam, for hosting. Thanks, everyone, for coming and being flexible. Um, so we're going to talk about the census just in a very sort of like, again, one-on-one introductory way. A lot of this will be review for some of you. A lot of it won't be um, because we're going to also talk about the libraries and our role in the census, since I think pretty much everyone here is a librarian. Um, and also what is going on related to coronavirus and census, because it is having an effect. So we'll address some of those questions. Um, so I'm obviously Rachel, the first year communication and social sciences librarian, um, and that's my email address. And then Melody is going to take the reins here in a little bit. She's our student success librarian and her email is there. Um, so I wanted to give everybody a link to these slides and maybe Sam, if you could drop that in the chat, it's go.uncg.edu slash census one, just the number one. Um, and uh, you'll have links to all the resources. We may add a couple links later on as we talk about things and questions come up. So definitely um, pay attention to that. I also wanted to draw your attention to this site. Give me just one second go.uncg.edu slash census. This is a Google site that we created just to sort of like a central landing page for census things happening at UNCG. Um, so you can see down here the ad for this as well as the slides. Um, you also have some FAQs about the census. So 
let me skip ahead for a second. Um, we want to be absolutely sure to acknowledge like several people who have worked on this census project and, and the stuff in this presentation. So Christina Gage from the Office of Leadership and Civic Engagement, as well as Lindsay Jamerson, who is a rock star. She is the UNCG Census Engagement Fellow. She's a senior. Um, I believe she's a Peace and Conflict Studies major. Um, and she is really sort of the driving force behind a lot of this content. I don't know if she's with us today. Um, but we definitely want to thank the two of them for helping us out with this. Um, and then, of course, there's myself and Melody. Um, Steve Kramer and Joe Klein are going to be giving a presentation um, later, I think in a couple weeks, on some things related to the census. So as we um, go along with that, we may transition that workshop to virtual. And that is designed for library employees. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to show you the site. There's some cool FAQs. A lot of this you're going to learn, but you may want to follow up in terms of um, if there are any graphics that you really want to share, things you'd like more information about, as well as this resources tab. And we're constantly building onto this. So this site is definitely a, a living sort of document. Um, and one thing before I start, Melody and I are not experts on the census. You may know things about the census that we don't know. So if there's anything you want to contribute, pop it in the chat. I'm not monitoring the chat at the moment, but we can definitely, um, like, we'll figure out how to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So not claiming expertise here, just some interested people. So what is the census? So I think you probably know um, some basics. It is once a decade. The decennial census is what it's called. Um, and it's about um, counting everyone in the country. So it has a lot of importance because it has to do with thinking about congressional representation, thinking about things like redistricting, distributing money. We're going to talk more specifically about where the federal funding um, that the census provide, provides goes. I will show you a breakdown of that. Um, and so in particular, when we're paying attention to North Carolina and Guilford County, we're going to see how um, the counts reflected in the census um, have had a direct like dollars and cents impact on our communities. So um, just a very basic sort of thing. The census is different from other um, sources of information like the Census Bureau doesn't just do the decennial census. They also do something called the American Community Survey. Um, I believe there are lots of other questionnaires and surveys that go out that people, you know, complete in different parts of the country at different times. So it's not just every 10 years, you'll find data on census.gov um, that addresses much more than, than just the 10-year counts. So why does the census matter? Well, um, political representation, federal funding, and community planning and economic development are the three big ones. And we will get into those um, specifically. There are other reasons for caring about the census. I mean, it also just has a lot of implications for research. Um, if you think about, you know, I see students in political science or in other social science fields who are using census data to actually inform um, some of their research and some of their practice. Um, it's not uncommon for students to have questions about this or just sort of independent researchers. I mean, this data gets used um, for a lot more than just these three things, but those are like sort of the when everyday people ask, why should I care about the census? This is, you know, what, what we tend to say. So political representation, um, the census determines how many congressional representatives each state is going to get based on the number of people. So obviously in the United States Senate, um, everyone gets two senators for their state. Um, <coughs> pardon me. But in the House of Representatives, it's different. Um, in the House of Representatives, you have a certain number um, based on your population size. So according to this chart, it looks like North Carolina currently has 13. And you can see that based on the census, we are projected to gain a seat. Um, and the only way that that can happen is if as many people as possible, if everyone takes the census, because we need um, as many people as possible to count themselves correctly um, in order to justify that. You can see there are some states that are actually projected to lose a seat. Minnesota, Illinois, Michigan. Texas actually stands to gain three seats, um, and it shows you their current representation. I cannot confirm this, 
Um, but I would also imagine that this might uh, um, inform the number of electoral college representatives you get. Um, maybe someone in the chat, or we can look that up later. Um, but I would imagine that there is a relationship between your state's um, congressional representatives and the number of um, electoral college votes that a state is given. So we can definitely look at that. I'm not making that claim. I'm just thinking that that's probably a thing. Okay. Um, so in North Carolina specifically, in the 2016 fiscal year, we got $23.8 billion through federal spending programs. And those spending programs are directly um, sort of informed by the last census count that we had, so 2010. So if you think about that, um, the people that took the census in 2010 were still influencing the amount of money that we were getting six years later or eight, nine, ten years later. So that, that's important. What we do now or what we don't do now um, can really have a far reaching impact on our future, not just sort of immediately, but long term. So $23.8 billion in fiscal year 2016. Um, I want to show you this chart. And if you click on the graphic there, it will take you to this. I'll also put it in the notes of this slide um, and I'll add it onto the census page. I want to show you the top five programs that benefit from census funding that these federal dollars are used for in North Carolina. So Medicaid is number one. Direct student loans, federal direct student loans, um, SNAP, Supplemental Nutritional Assistance, um, medic, uh, excuse me, Medicare, and then Highway Planning and Construction, followed really closely by the Pell Grants Program. So two of the top six programs d relate directly to students. So if there are any students or college uh, sort of affiliated folks that are watching this later on, know that the census has a major impact on what we do at colleges and universities and students' ability to attend our colleges and universities. Um, obviously, the medical programs and the nutritional programs are also huge. Um, but I find this, this breakdown really, really interesting. Um, and you can certainly feel free to explore it later on. There were things in here that I didn't, um, I think there are 55 different federal programs. Um, and I didn't even know that some of them existed, like for instance, community services block grants. That's really interesting. You might want to explore that. So, and of course this comes from um, George Washington University and it's linked in the presentation. So who should take the census? Um, the answer is pretty simple. Every person living in the United States, regardless of citizenship or affiliation. Um, this includes babies. This includes every person who is living in your household. Um, I believe the census says, like, are you regularly staying at this household as of April 1st? Um, so also citizenship, as this slide says, citizenship is not something that is asked about on the census. It is not a factor. They want to know who is living in the United States regardless of status. Um, and we definitely want to acknowledge that there are some communities who have been um, hesitant to fill out the census because there was this rumor um, coming from high up in our government that there was going to be a citizenship question. We can confirm there is no citizenship question on the 2020 census. There is one excuse me, I believe on um, the American Community Survey coming up, um, but the census is quite different from that. So they're really trying to encourage people to participate. And it's just one person per household that needs to fill it out. You'll receive, um, or at least I received in the mail, uh, a notice that said, okay, you need to take the census. Here's how to do it, um, going online, filling it out. You also have mail and phone options, but we will get into some of that. And then um, Melody is going to take over at this point. Hang on one second. I'm going to stop sharing. And then Sam, if you could switch the reins. OK, I'm switching the reins now. OK. So Melody, um, you should be getting a message. Do you see it? Oh, hold on. I went to my thing. Um, Yes. And then um, in the middle of your screen, there is a big share button. Yep. Okay. Is it, is it gone? Yep. I can see it. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Let me get to where we were. Excuse me. Okay. 
So where can I go to get help with the census? Um, so uh, for North Carolina resources, one thing you could do is you could call the census regional office. That number is there. Um, you can complete the 2020 census over the phone, which is something that I believe is being encouraged now, um, given the state of the coronavirus situation. Um, and then also there's the nccensus.org website that you can go to um, for more resources. How can libraries help? Um, well, this is traditionally how libraries are helping. Obviously now in the situation, some of this will be impacted depending on you know, libraries closing and that kind of thing. But traditionally, like, you know, just having computer and internet access is really important um, for folks who might not have that at home. Um, you know, we know the library is a big part of certain communities. Um, and so uh, having that sort of hub of like computers and internet access is really important. Um, helping people apply for census jobs. This is also a big one because we know that given that the census happens every 10 years, uh, when it does happen, it's a big rollout and that they probably need a lot of help um, with that process. So uh, there's a lot of job opportunities in that moment and li librarians are traditionally really good at helping people apply for jobs in general. Um, connecting with complete count committees. Um, I'm not really, Rachel, can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So complete count committees are um, basically organizations that get together in communities. So Guilford County has a complete count committee, which I believe the census fellow Lindsay is on. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, it's, it's in an effort to make sure that hard to count communities um, are, you know, taking the census as much as possible. So if you think about um, typically undercounted communities would include um, minorities or people who are immigrants or people who maybe deal with um, uh, homelessness issues, things like that. So just taking groups that that do not typically complete the census as much as, as we would like to see um, and trying to do outreach and trying to make sure that, that the whole community um, is getting counted. So yeah, that's that's what those are about. There's lists of them online. If you just Google complete count committee um, for your area, uh, you should be able to connect with one. Awesome, thank you so much. I thought you could speak to that a little bit better than I can. And we'll actually look at some sort of numbers um, in Greensboro. And um, I think that from those numbers, you can kind of see where like, there's some you know uh, folks who are not being counted uh, so that's something that we'll look at. But also the library is really great at fighting misinformation and scams um, and increasing awareness and programming in general. So, you know, uh, Rachel and I have been trying to do this in uh, our library. Unfortunately, we did have to cancel some in-person events, um, but doing stuff like the webinar and um, like Rachel mentioned, Steve and Joe uh, will be uh, taking that even further with sort of like how to use census data in a later workshop. So libraries as census partners. So there's many free resources for community members. So NC Live, we know is a really great resource. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, NC Live is this great resource. If you have a public library card, you can access it. And there's all kinds of resources, including um, databases that uh, typically you would find uh, through an academic library that are, you know, that's often really expensive and not accessible to the general public. So that's a really great useful. Um, and they are also uh, just great at helping find relevant information. Um, and that could be a variety of different things. So how is the COVID-19 uh, situation um, impacting the census? So um, for us specifically, um, UNCG Library is canceling events. Um, we had an event uh, for April 1st, which will be canceled. Um, that was the, um, it was like a census awareness event. I believe that we were going to have like cake and stuff and um, just give out information, but unfortunately that won't be happening. Um, closures affecting internet access, phone and mailer options are still available. So yes, um, uh, I think that with an increased amount of people um, going online to fill this out, I think that uh, that could affect the internet access. Um, and I know that um, the uh, 
they're trying to limit the amount of like face-to-face -face contact and when it comes to people going to doors and uh, promoting the census and getting people to fill out the census. So um, they're definitely encouraging uh, um, filling it out by phone or mailing options. Um, that's still available as well. Um, yeah, so electronic participation still remains the focus though. So uh, this is just a quote. The Census Bureau says it's ready to change its plan depending on the situation. Its outreach workers are holding meetings over the phone rather than in person, and it's prepared to delay sending out census workers later this year in outbreak areas. But the main strategy for now is the Bureau is incur encouraging every household to fill out a form themselves. Do it from home, no contact with other people needed. You can do it on my2020census.gov, over the phone, or mail back a paper form if you get one. So just sort of emphasizing what I just said. Um, so how will students be affected? Um, per the Census Bureau's residence criteria, in most cases, students living away from home at school should be counted at school, even if they are temporary, temporarily elsewhere due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so one thing that I did want to point out um, was the census quick facts feature. Um, and I'm going to go to that now. And this is what I was mentioning earlier about looking at numbers. So um, a link is on there. So you should be able to access it. Um, but what it's going to do is it's going to bring up um, just the general United States uh, data. So you can see that there's different um, like subgroups within this. So age and sex, race and Hispanic origin, population characteristics, housing, et cetera. So like if we wanted to compare this to Greensboro, there we go. All right, so now we have Greensboro compared to the United States. Can everybody see that? I, I'm not checking the chat to see if everyone's checking. But, um, so yeah, you can see sort of the difference between, you know, um, who filled out the census versus, you know, in Greensboro versus the United States um, as a whole. Um, and see sort of those numbers. Um, another thing you can do is you can um, go to this map and you can maybe get a little bit more specific. So let's say, I want to look, let's see. I'm just gonna click on a random one. Okay, so I'm gonna add that. And then I'm gonna go back to the table. So it brings up that information too. So you can compare different uh, cities um, to Greensboro, to the United States in general. Um, yeah, so it just has like some pretty inf interesting information. Um, computer and internet use, I think this one's a really interesting one um, in terms of households with a computer, households with broadband internet subscription um, from 2014 to 2018. Um, you can see that both Lexington City and Greensboro City are um, definitely below the United States um, average there, so, um, or percentage. Um, if you are somehow a visual person like me and you like to see uh, charts that kind of point this out, we could like could click on that and then go up here to the chart and view select locations and it'll sort of show it in a chart form that kind of helps you um, process that information. So this is a really interesting thing to look at um, if you just sort of want to um, sort of see who's filling out the census, what the data is, and comparing it to uh, the United States as a whole. All right, I'm going to go back. Okay, I believe that's it. Um, are there any questions? This is Sam. Y'all are welcome to unmute yourself by um, unmuting the microphone um, next to your name and to the participant or at the bottom of your screen, um, clicking on the microphone option. Uh, you can also put your questions into chat as well. 
And while people are doing that, I'll point out, so the original plan, uh, the plan is still actually that the university will count um, students who live on campus. Um, so they don't have to do that themselves. And uh, based on, you know, that press release that we saw from the Census Bureau, that is still the plan that students, um, even if you're at home right now, um, if you are still technically a residential student, your university will count you. Um, and I believe there are some measures in place for preventing double counts, things like that. Uh, so they've definitely thought of it and are sort of adjusting as they go, like all of us. So as um, people are thinking about it, I learned something. I learned that I need to fill it out for May and Rose, my daughters. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. I maybe would have missed that <laughs> otherwise. Yeah. Um, yeah, they want everybody. I did not know that at all. Yeah. Um, so as people are thinking about questions too, um, both Jenny and I are in the room. If you have any questions about the VLC, uh, as she's calling it, the learning communities. Um, it's still in the works. There's stuff coming up. Um, this, as you saw from the beginning, is a um, was always geared towards like instructors and staff wanting to learn about research and applications or online learning um, series. So um, as you probably saw, um, if you go to that website that was put into the chat for the webinars, um, there's two series. Um, based on what's going on, we might be adding more to this, but, um, you know, I don't want to speak for Jenny, but the VLC stuff she's doing is um, more kind of, um, I think, internally facing for us as a library community, whereas these can be, um, are um, available to everyone at UNCG. Uh, so if you uh, have a, a topic that you would like to share on, uh, you can email me uh, individually. Um, again, um, you could also put in for Jenny's VLC and if uh, she thinks that it's more appropriate for externally facing stuff, uh, we can uh, talk about that as well. But we'll probably be adding in a couple more to the series since um, people might be looking for this kind of professional development even beyond the library. Um, and so stay tuned for that as well. Um, I will put an email out and add it to the webinar list that I guess is on, I think, uh, behind the stacks as well. So are there any questions as we kind of wrap up? I, we're right at like that 30 minute mark, even though we started a little bit late. This is a shameless plug for virtual meditation today at 3.30. It was really yes. great this morning. So if you'd like the link, email me. Yes, that I'm, maybe I think I might be able to go. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of meetings. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep you all here. Um, enjoy your uh, lunch or next thing, wherever you are. And uh, have a great day. We will send out a um, link with the recording after the fact. There's a survey of uh, how you thought this went. So uh, feel free to fill that out. And uh, again, everyone have a great day. Thank you. Uh, Rachel and Melody, I'm ending. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. can get out. Thank I mean, you. Appreciate it. Well, but yeah, yeah. I, no, it went cool. great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.